everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad book club. Today I'm joined by Coda and hey, and because again. of this wonderful wheel that we have, uh, we're doing another Elliot extra. <laughs> yes. I'm well, kind of... another we say another, but it, it's it's the same one. Yeah. We're we're still reading the same book. <laughs> Cuz it's long. Yeah, but it's real good. It uh, it is the best thing we've read thus far. <laughs> It's not saying a lot. <laughs> it's not, but, you know, it says a little bit. Yeah, comparing this to the other Stardew Valley one that we did, this one, this wins by a landslide. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is like... This is like God tier. <laughs> yeah. Nothing will ever compare to that fucking Zosin that we did. <laughs> that was pretty insane. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Like, I don't even know how people come up with that. Me either, but it was great. I I, I still rewatched the beginning part of, of Sanji getting, like, at the aromantic tea and just making oh my, fun. Oh that was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh. Alrighty, so it's the same book, Mirroring the Endless Night. So... So we're on chapter seven right now. Don't mind the POV replacer. I won't be replacing anyone's names. It's just on every chapter now that I have the extension. <laughs> <laughs> no chapter this chapter. Or you know what? I could replace or Oren's um like the cat name to Onion. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of saying Orion, it would be Onion. <laughs> I, I kind of, I really love that, actually. You know what? Fuck yeah. Hold on. Replace onion. Orin to Onion. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's Onion now on my screen. Plug in my silly little laptop. Imagine, like, you're like, oh shit, I gotta plug this in. You Like, your computer dies halfway through. <laughs> well, um, for, like, homework that I'm giving you, watch Jerma. Watch what? Watch Germa. Okay, could you send me that? That way I can watch it afterwards. <laughs> yes. Abs I will watch anything at least once. I still gotta watch the new puppet show I keep seeing on my YouTube. Oh, yeah, I've heard the about that. The Welcome Home. It's really it. good, apparently, but I need to watch it. But it was like, damn, 48 minutes? No, thank you. <laughs> oh, amateur. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You'll watch One Piece for 48 minutes of puppets. <laughs> oh my god, you're so right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get through One Piece so I could finish reading that fan fiction I was reading. <laughs> oh, I thought that's my motivation now for finishing One Piece. Not because it's a good story, which it is. It's a, One Piece is a phenomenal story and the arcs are great and everything. I just need to read this fan fiction and I can't read it unless I go to the next arc. <laughs> I mean, we all have our motivations in life. Yeah, my motivation is to finish One Piece so I can read that Zoro extra. <laughs> Completely understandable. Absolutely. All right. All right. Do you want me to start on this one? Uh, sure. Alrighty. Whew. Crops are watered. I checked the chickens. I fed onion. I'm pretty sure that's everything. <laughs> Look, onion's a great name for a cat. I, I really do like onion. I named my Stardew cat Gumbo. Gumbo? <laughs> I love yeah. that one. Uh, I named mine after my, my cat, Miller. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, because they had a gray cat. I'm like, oh, that looks just like my cat. Aww. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Which, uh, for context, I have two cats. One's name is Guinness, and the other one's name is Miller. And yes, they are named after beards. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute, though. Yeah. Maria listed out loud. The, the old porch steps creaked under her weight as she looked up from her front door. Briefly pausing, she checked the time on her phone and panicked upon seeing the numbers 836 flash on her screen. Shit, the dance is gonna start at 9! This is- this is when- it's when it's like 4.50 and you're like, Oh shit, Pierre closes in like 10 minutes! Oh yeah! 
That feeling is insane. Yeah, that's when you get the rush of adrenaline when you run over as fast as possible. Yes. Like, I need speed now. Dashing into her house, she unceremoniously stripped off her cotton shirt and denim shorts, grumbling on how sweaty she already was despite being early in the morning. Damn, this early heat, she grumbled, shrugging off her undergarments as she stepped into the bathroom and fumbled with the, the knobs as she sent water pouring on her pouring out of her shower head. One quick shower later, Maria was toweling herself off as she walked back into the single room that was her house. Slipping on a fresh pair of panties and the only strapless <laughs> bra she owned, she let out a content sigh as she picked up the white dress which had been carefully laid across her wooden table. She smiled fondly as she unzipped the back of the dress, treating the fabric with gentle care as she stepped into it and pulled it up over her torso and chest. Emily has insisted that uh, she make the farmer's dress unique, despite Maria insisting the opposite. No, no, each of the girls' dresses is different. Haley's is similar to something that'd be worn in a ballet performance with a sheer floral pattern. Mine is a lot more minimal with a longer skirt. Abigail's skirt is high in the front and low in the back. Come on, just let me know what you want. Maybe something with breathable fabric or... How do you feel about sheer sleeves? Oh, Emily's so nice. Yeah. I wish I got to marry her. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so good. Maybe I'll do it in my next Stardew Valley run. Yes. I'll probably do Leah. Nice. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed my boy. He was like, if I tell you who I'm going for right now, would you be mad? I'm like, no, of course not. The options are like pretty like good ones for the girls. Yeah. He said Haley. <laughs> no. And I'm like, well, people do say that she gets better as like the more times you talk to her and everything, the more hearts. So I'm going to believe him. Unless he just I... loves being degraded, which I'll find out. <laughs> Cameron, if you're watching, anyway, I'm so sorry. Cameron, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I just added you. <laughs> Cameron, if you're watching, why Haley? I am making fun of you. Dude, to be fair, I go for I went for Elliot and then Harvey. <laughs> I guess uh, it... I I can't criticize you much because I like both of them. <laughs> I feel like Karen was like hardcore judging when when I was talking about Harvey and everything for playing yeah, Stardew Valley. Every time that I talk about Harvey to someone, people are like, "Why, why Harvey?" <laughs> hey, you know what? It's a better option than Shane. <laughs> exactly. Like, although I think it's funny that like half the people I talk to are like, "Why would you marry Harvey?" and then the other half are like, "Yeah, I married Harvey." <laughs> Too shy to admit it until I say it. It's funny, like, both runs I wanted, I had two options that I wanted to do. My first run mm -hmm. I did, I was waiting between Elliot and Alex, but Elliot got uh, more hearts yeah. faster, so I, I went with Elliot. And then mm -hmm. the second time I was like, either Harvey or Alex, and I just, like, Harvey's heart events went through, like, a fucking landslide. Like, it was so yeah. easy to pick up on his schedule. <laughs> yeah, he's... He's easy to please. So, Ellie, like, Alex has been fucking second place on both <laughs> runs. Well, maybe third time's the charm. <laughs> maybe. Alright, let's see. <laughs> After about an hour discussing and brainstorming, El Emily had decided on and stretched her final design, oh, sketched her final design to Maria, a knee-high dress, which was tailored to fit snugly on her waist, nicely showing off her natural curves. The skirt billowed out into folds, flowing beautifully whenever she spun on her heels. The sleeves were off the shoulder and short, allowing an easy arm movement. The fabric breathed nicely, which the farmer was more than thankful for due to the weather, the warm weather. Once the dress was zipped and, and sitting snug on her form, she walked back to the bathroom and gave herself a look over to make any final adjustments. Deciding to keep it simple, she let... She let her hair down, knowing it's air-dried and curly nice by the time she'll get to marked-off location in s s fuck Cider Snap Forest. 
Makeup wasn't something she normally wore, especially now that she worked on the farm and would typically sweat off any product she put on, but today was a special occasion. Small amounts of foundation and concealer were applied, mostly to cover up blemishes or scars that were either years old or newly garnered from farm work. As Maria worked to cover up the little imperfections, she curiously examined her reflection, noting, noting the freckles that had begun to appear on her cheeks and arms, likely from the hours spent in the sun. Her already tan skin had deepened a tone or two, but luckily the dress was able to cover any unfavorable tan lines. Satisfied with her appearance, she exited the bathroom and shut the door behind her. As she slipped on a pair of short-heeled slippers, Onion jumped up onto the open window pane and slipped into the house. Try not to cause any trouble while I'm gone, you little rascal, she murmured, scratching behind the feline's ears as she walked past him. I don't have the plug-in that replaces names, so I just have to, like, remind myself to say Onion. It's alright. You, you did good the last time we did the, the replacer. Thank you. It's It, it keeps me, uh, it, it works my brain. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck does that say? The Burmsy? Burmese. Bur- the, the Burmese. Like the Burmese. Bur- <laughs> oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine. Merely mewled and pressed his forehead to her palm, and she smiled sweetly before walking out of the house, checking the clock one last time before setting off down the dirt path she carved out, heading south with a skip in her step. The water of the river rippled for what appeared to be a sunfish dashing by, causing the reflection of the cloudless sky to distort. Elliot stared back at himself as he stood over the, the river, his freshly ironed blue suit reflected brightly on the blue water. What's with the frown? If a voice asked curiously, pulling the writer away from his thoughts. He glances over to see Leah walking towards him, her white sundress billowing in the light breeze. He fixes his posture and drops the frown which he hadn't even realized was playing on his lips. Hello, Leah. I'm merely lost in my thoughts. No need for concern, he replies with a calm voice, adjusting the cuffs of his sleeves. The sculptor hummed as she moved beside him, brushing her ginger braid over her shoulder as she looked down at the water alongside him. Well, let me pick at your brain a bit. What are you thinking so hard about? She questions curiously. I'm pondering my failure in the literary field. I've drafted the beginnings of a new novel, one I'm hoping publishers may be more keen to look at. But the weight of constant rejection is admittedly dragging me down. Quite hard to remain motivated when savings are slowly withering away, and nothing I write seems to hit the mark anymore, he explained, pursing his lips. You're only a failure once you give up. And you haven't given up yet, right? Leah tried to assure him, offering a small smile of encouragement. The writer smiled and returned weakly. Yes, yes, I suppose you're right, as per usual. This new story I'm attempting is a far cry from my previous venture. The first book I published was an adventure novel. However, I'm currently working on a romance piece. Romance? Leah asked with a small grin. Were, was there anything that sparked your interest in that specific genre? Like, perhaps a certain farmer? <laughs> <laughs> I do the same shit. I'm like, oh, damn, you're suddenly interested in that? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I used face flush at the mention of Maria as he furiously shook his head. No, of course not. I am simply wanted to dip my toes into a type of writing I never attempted before. What a liar. <laughs> Ever since the egg festival... Sorry, did you start reading? No, 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 no. I was, I was just saying, like, he's a liar. <laughs> That. <laughs> You're good. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since the egg festival, Leah had been making small jabs and teasing mentions of the farmer to him. She never overstepped any boundaries or went too far, but she insisted that he must have had some sort of crush or romantic infatuation with her. Elliot was simply happy he'd never mentioned the tattoo incident to Ooh. his artist friend, for he knew he'd never hear the end of it if she knew what had happened that day. Whatever you say, Leo grinned, shrugging her shoulders casually before stepping away from the river. Come on, you could use a pick-me-up. Let's go see what Gus cooked this year. Elliot allowed himself to be guided away from the river, his stomach silent over as soon as the scent of food wafted his way. The pair approached a, t- a table with various dishes and drinks on display, meats and salads, and 
strange floral scents mixing to create an intoxicating aroma that drew the writer in. Elliot, it's good to see you. You haven't left that cabin in so long. I was starting to think the worst had happened. Willie said with a good-natured charl before taking a swig of what appeared to be mead. The writer nodded, somehow embarrassed, as he picked up a glass of ice water and lifted it to his lips. The, the cool liquid combined with the heat of the sun. Ah, yes, apologies, my dear friend. I'm afraid I've been cemented in my own home as of late. I buried my book. I buried my nose into yet another book of mine. The fisherman nodded his head knowingly, tipping his drink back once more before going slightly wide eyed and peering around the the uh, the ambered haired man. He wasn't the only one that seemed to be staring at something, for whatever had entered the field had caught Gus's attention as well as Pam, Shane, and Abigail, who were now standing around the food table. The young purple haired lady tugged excitedly on the arm of Sam and Sebastian before pointing towards the field entrance with a grin. Sorry, had to yawn. Confused, Elliot turned on his heel, not knowing what all this commotion could possibly be about. But once his eyes landed on the figure who had drawn the town's attention, oh, he finally understood. Maria had finally arrived at the dance, looking around shyly as she entered the marked-off area for the festivities. The writer couldn't help but stare as she stopped to speak to Pierre, who has always had a small stand-up. She grinned and seemingly laughed at something the vendor said, sight making a smile tug on Elliot's own lips. Then she turned, her curly hair swinging and shimmering in the sun, and when her soft brown eyes met his own green ones, she lifted a hand to wave sweetly. He was quick to lift his own arm, waving her a hello in return. When she greeted, uh, turned to greet Caroline, who had rushed over, likely to speak and gush about the farmer's dress, he dropped his arm and tilted his head, only to see a pair of deep blue eyes boring into him. What? He asked, a tad too quick, a bit too defensive. Leah laughed, and Elliot frowned upon realizing she was laughing at him. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't see the look on your face, she giggled. You look starstruck. Leah, that is absurd. I was not starstruck. She, he attempted to argue back, but he lifted her hand to stop him. Don't even bother, she interrupted him, still giggling a, a bit. I know you can't see it, but it's incredibly obvious to everyone around you. If you two aren't dancing together, I'll be shocked. And before Elliot could say another word to Edgewise, she's... What the... F soldered? Sauntered. Sauntered away, presumably towards the salad bowl. The farmer sure does clean up nicely, hmm. Gus mentioned as he walked over a plate of various fruit, fruit tarts on his hands. Elliot nodded his head to silently agree, happy to take the pomegranate tart that was offered to him. Yes, yeah, she certainly does, he mused to himself. Stealing another glance at Maria as she walked over to the field to greet more townsfolk. He likes her. <laughs> you don't say. That's <laughs> <laughs> just a hunch I have. Do you, do, do, do you think he likes, likes her? <laughs> um, you know what? It, uh, I'm starting to think so. Oh, shit. I love <laughs> slow burners like this. This is so good. Yeah. They're just better. You look so good, Emily exclaimed, grasping her skirt in one skirt in one hand as she dashed over to meet the farmer. Maria blushed and clasped her hands together. Thank you, though I suppose I should thank you twice since you're the one that made the dress. It's gorgeous. I'm glad you like it so much, she grinned, letting go of her skirt to let it flow around her legs. So, do you know if you'll be dancing with anyone? Haley sticked the claim on Alex, as per usual, and Marnie roped me into dancing with Shane. Uh, I don't know. It's my first year, so I don't think I'll even be able to convince anyone to dance with me, she laughed awkwardly. A small nagging thought at the back of her mind, reminding her of all her thoughts of dancing with Elliot. Um, do you know who else is available to dance? If I'm lucky, maybe I'll have a partner. Emily? I don't remember how much I read. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Whew. Emily hummed and tapped her chin. Well, there's Dr. Harvey, but he's most likely going to dance with Maru again. They tend to pair up as friends normally. We should do it with Harvey. <laughs> Har <laughs> Not like that. I'm a dance. Sorry. <laughs> Real life. Bad choice of words. My apologies. <laughs> oh, man. 
I barely talk to Harvey, and I only see Mario when stopping by Robin's for the building project or a chat. There's Sebastian, Sam, and Abigail. You can talk to them. You can talk to all of them, yeah? Sam has been talking about Penny to dance the entire week, and I already know Sebastian and Abigail are going to dance as friends like they always do. Emily continued to ramble on, suggesting various people for Maria to dance with. She grimmed at the mention of Clint as a possible dance partner. <laughs> not because the blacksmith off not because the blacksmith off put her in any way, but merely because he had incredibly obvious crush on the bartender that she was oblivious to. Her ears yep. perked up at the mention of a certain unburned haired man, however. Well, there's always Elliot. You're friends with him, right? Leah, too. They danced together last year, but neither of them have mentioned anything about man dancing together t again. Now I just miss Harvey. Yeah, me too. We'll re we'll we'll get to him. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay, I, I miss him. I <laughs> might I might play Stardew later today. <laughs> me too. <laughs> just because I miss Harvey. Me too. I miss my fucking virtual husband. This dude. Yeah, I, side note, I was on tiktok and you know how those like am i the asshole videos with the fucking yes. subway surfers so i saw one it was like am i the asshole for getting mad at my girlfriend about her like um her fictional boyfriend like her fictional mm -hmm. husband and it was this fucking dude complaining that her his girlfriend started playing stardew valley and while he okay. was showing off her farm to him he was like wait who's that and it was like another person in her house she's like oh it's just a roommate mm -hmm. Just playing it off, and then he goes onto her profile, and it turns out they're married, and she and he wants her to divorce this man because it's technically cheating. <laughs> it, it, that's ridiculous. And you know what else is funny? I like did the math. They worked together for two years, and they said their ages. Dude, this mm. guy was twenty five when this girl was seventeen. No. <laughs> oh God. I'm like, you have to known her before that, you know. You don't just automatically start dating. Yeah. You fucking groomed okay. this woman. <laughs> so I was like, yes, and the asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're the asshole. I hope that you split apart for her sake. <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. I know, and I'm People like, are crazy. I know. Dude, I'm glad Cameron don't get jealous of me talking about yeah. Sanji and Zoro and like all these fucking fictional men. <laughs> Yeah, uh, me and uh, Junie, my partner, we constantly talk about our characters that we like. <laughs> so very thankful for that. Dude, I know, I know when, like, if, like, if an anime person were to come to life, especially for it to either be Nami or Robin, mm -hmm. uh, Cameron would jump on that in a heartbeat. <laughs> exactly. So like, why can't I like do that? Characters. Let's just embrace it. Yeah, they're fictional for a reason. <laughs> exactly. They're not real. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. If I like some dude in Star Wars, and I might kiss him a little bit, <laughs> real, that's fine. <laughs> Everybody's got him. That's why fan fiction exists. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. Where the fuck do we leave off? <laughs> oh, um, here. Got it. Okay, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll yeah, do the paragraph. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Maria's brow furrowed, and she turned to look towards the river where Elliot stood chatting casually with Leah and Willie. A gentle smile graced his features as he brushed a lock of hair behind his shoulder, drawing her attention towards the suit he wore. It suits him somehow, she mused. It's a suit! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> um, she mused, not quite used to seeing him without his signature red coat but certainly being able to appreciate the way the well-tailored blue outfit sat on his figure, outlining his slim and tall form. That's an awful lot of staring you're doing. The farmer jumped upon hearing Emily's whispered statement, whipping her head around to see the blue-haired bartender looking over at her with a bemused expression. Maria opened her mouth to attempt to argue, but when she couldn't think of a good excuse, excuse she merely shut it, letting out an exasperated sigh and slumping her shoulders. Emily giggled and nodded her head in the direction of the river. Go on, talk to him. Ask. I'll be surprised if he says no. The farmer steeled her confidence and nodded her head, muttering a soft goodbye and marched off towards the river, ignoring the cheeky grin her friend made as she walked off. Oh, while you're over there, try that red jelly at the food stand. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, I was burping. <laughs> Take your time. So, will the two of you be dancing again? 
Lily asked over his mug of med. Depends, Leah said with a shrug of her shoulders. Personally, I'm placing my bets that Elliot's dancing with Maria this year. The writer flushed, sipping his glass of ice water rather than make another attempt to debate his friend over the topic. The fisherman grinned before nudging Elliot's arm gently. Well, speak of the devil, looks like you might get your wish, boy. He laughed heartedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. Willie, so that's my my boy was like if there's a chance to like romance Willie, he would because <laughs> mm-hmm. he loves fishing. I wish... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Willie were romanceable, I think that that would be uh, an amazing addition to the game. I hope there's a mod to romance Willie. Do check while I read. You, you yeah, there's gotta be. I, I also kind of wish that I could romance like Marnie Demetrius. And Clint. But. Why Clint? <laughs> uh, that's not possible. Dude, I know my boy was so disappointed that he couldn't romance Robin. So if, yeah. I, if I do find the mod on PC for, to romance mm-hmm. Robin, I'll get him Stardew Valley for the PC and download the mod. <laughs> <laughs> he could be a home wrecker. I mean, he can have Robin and I can have Demetrius. Alright, perfect. See? Happy marriage. Right. Yes. <laughs> he froze momentarily, assuming the older man was implying Mar- Maria was nearby. A sudden greeting confirmed his suspicions. Hello there. Oh, guys, it smells wonderful. Do you cater every festival the town holds? The saloon owner owner chortled? Chor- yep. And thanked the farmer as he as she approached the river edge. I sure do, but it's even better this year since I'll be using a lot of your fresh crops. Those mashed potatoes right there, all from your farm. Same goes for the bean hot pot, the parsnip soup, and the cheese cauliflower. A blush dust Maria's cheeks, and Elliot couldn't help but grin at the sight of her being so flush over all of his comments. Oh, compliments. I mean, technically, same thing, but... (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Well, I'm very happy that my little farm operation is doing this good. Remind me to snack a bowl of that soup later, will you? She smiled gracefully. Humble as always, just like your grandpappy of yours, Lily chortled. Making any progress on that fishing rod? The bamboo pole is doing me wonders. I survive purely on fish I catch in between harvests. Plus, I feed my cat all the meal scraps, she explained. Hi there, Maria. Glad to see you here, Leah greeted her. Love the dress, by the way. Ah, oh, thanks, the farmer flushed. I'm assuming Emily's made yours as well? Unless you can sew, along with painting and sculpting. Nah, you'd be right. Emily sewed it. They were just laugh. Speaking of which, I'm going to see how she's uh, doing before the dance starts. You two have fun. While she never specified who she was referring to, Elliot had the sneaking suspicion that her final comment was one more sly remark tossed his way, urging him to dance with the farmer. He finally turned to look down at her, and when as quickly as their gazes met, they were torn apart once more. So, um, will you and Leah be dancing together? She asked curiously. Most likely, as friends we've come to an agreement to be one another's partners if no one else asks either of us, he replies smoothly. That's like an open invitation to ask him. Yeah, that's like trying to be like subtle about it, like you're too nervous to ask, and you're like, well, if no one asks yeah. me, then, then I'll just dance with this person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm dancing with her if no one else asks me. Uh, I don't know who else would ask me, but, you know, if someone did ask me to dance, um, <laughs> I, I would. Yeah, but unfortunately no one would do that unless, like, you maybe know someone. <laughs> yeah, um, do you know someone who would ask me to dance? <laughs> <laughs> That's some shit I would pull. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, she... I would, like the asker but i would be like it's fine if not you don't have to yeah i would pull that shit away do you want to i do that shit all the time i was like do you want to go to a uh, sushi well, but well, we don't have to if you don't want to we can go somewhere else <laughs> i pull yeah, that, I shit, that so shit so much <laughs> uh she mumbles and notice her pause oh he noticed her pause as though she's thinking hard of what to say next deciding to ease things along he turned to face her fully and offered a smile. May I say that you look absolutely dazzling? 
<laughs> she soft. She giggled softly and quirked her eyebrows. Are you saying I don't look dazzling every day? <laughs> That's the shit I do. <laughs> Just like, oh, you look good today. I'm like, I don't look good every other day. Are you saying I'm ugly? <laughs> The writer stammered, leading her to laugh even more. Don't worry, I can accept the compliment. Thank you. I look rather... You look rather dashing as well. Though he was blushed from... Though he blushed from her comp... Fuck, man. You got <laughs> though she, Though he blushed from her comment... Thank you. <laughs> he gazed down at her softly, satis- satisfied knowing that she's still comfortable with him. The two haven't spent much time together since the Egg Festival, and he was more than happy to see that she wasn't put off after the admittedly forward actions of that day. Ooh. (laughs) Oh, that was spectacular. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, it just occurred to me, like, as you were reading and you said the, uh, like, the might I just say that you, like, absolutely dashing line, dazzling line, that, like, he sounds really British. Maybe. Like, do you think he's British? Was he British this whole time? I don't know. Like, Did, are you saying I me. married a British man my first oh, my Hold first on, run? I'm gonna Google is Elliot. <laughs> 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 Sorry about no, it. It's just giving me results for the name Elliot. Um, Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's nothing. There's nothing. Damn. <laughs> In my heart, it's possible. Oh, it's like Fannin. Like it's like. Yeah. Ugh. You tell I, me I married I don't a feel British like man. Him an accent, though. <laughs> I'll try. Okay. <laughs> I'll be, I'll okay. Be if shit. you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll I'll try it and see how it works. Okay. <laughs> Whose turn is it? <laughs> I think it's your turn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Alright. British trial run. Round one. (laughs) Take one. Action. (laughs) Well, my D&D character's British, so I have to be British every week. (laughs) So I'll just do my D&D character. (laughs) Why, thank you. I'll have you know I wore my best shirt today. This sort of thing doesn't happen very often, he grinned, adjusting his <laughs> eye and winking playfully. I don't know how I feel about it. I can see oh, I would have never noticed. I haven't had the chance to see the shirts you wear since someone decided to coop himself up in his cabin for three weeks, she quickly brought up. Yes, I did do that, didn't I? He murmured, furrowing his brow slightly. Apologies. I found myself being hit with a sudden wave of inspiration and simply had to put pen to paper. I'm afraid I have a poor habit of isolating myself when feeling creatively driven. He noticed Maria's smile drop as she turned her gaze to the water. I can understand knowing, throwing yourself into your work, but I guess I was just kind of concerned. For your well-being, I mean. Maybe I'll have to drop by from time to time to make sure you're doing alright. This took Elliot back. He hadn't considered the fact that she may have wanted to see him, to know his whereabouts, or even to talk to him. He supposed he was taken aback by someone other than Leah or Willie had him in mind. So, what's the theme of this new novel? I think you mentioned your previous one was an action story, she said with, with genuine cur- curiosity. Her eyes flicked up towards him. Before he could answer, however, a whistle was blown across the field. The flower dance will begin shortly, if I may ask all of our dancers to take place within the field. As soon as they heard these words, Elliot and Maria locked eyes, blush dust their cheeks. He watched as the farmer shut her eyes and took a deep breath before blurting out a sentence that he could barely understand. <laughs> Do you want to go to dance with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the writer chuckled softly. I, I, I begged your pardon? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. You started the British thing and I'm in tears. <laughs> I didn't I, was, I expect it to be. <laughs> no, it was perfect. I can see him like being British. It was just wasn't expecting you to be like but you just like you have like a fucking British persona. Like it was perfect. Apparently, I we should put a, a British flag on the thumbnail. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. Oh. oh God, where are we? Um, she huffed. Uh huh. She huffed. Okay. She huffed. Right. <laughs> she huffed in a puffin. <laughs> obvious on her face as she, as her freckled cheeks grew even more red. Would, would you like to dance with me, Elliot? <laughs> I'm like crying from British Elliot. Me too. Oh shit, okay. Uh, he paused, partially because he couldn't quite believe she'd actually ask. But there she was, nervously standing in front of him with her hands balled into fists as she courageously asked the question he couldn't. Despite the way his face was undoubtedly caked in blush, red blush, his eye gaze softened and he held his hand up. Of course, I would love to dance with you today, Maria, he answered with a gentle The former visibly eased, her tense shoulders relaxing as she placed her hand within his, placing her fingers together and grinning sweetly. We'd better get going then, yeah? I don't feel like getting yelled at by Lewis today. Holy shit. <laughs> I love British Elliot. <laughs> oh my god. I have tears. <laughs> Me too. Oh my god. I don't think I laughed this hard in fucking forever. Real. <laughs> Maria could feel a dozen pairs of eyes at her as she and Elliot neared the dancing field. She spied Leah standing near the fence, sipping a, a wine glass casually, as though she has been well prepared to be watching from the sidelines. In the corner of her eyes, she could see Jody and Caroline speaking in hushed whispers, no doubt gossiping for what they assumed was the newly bundled couple. A sudden wave of anxiety washed over her. She quickly realized that she had no idea what she was doing. <laughs> what have I done? I don't know how to dance. I've never seen this before. Oh my, Yoba. I I made a fool of myself. I'm <laughs> gonna embarrass Elliot. Dude, this reminds me when you first get to be part of the dance and everything was people actually like you. And you're like mm -hmm. doing like the complete opposite of what the dancers are doing. Yes. <laughs> Makes oh, it I so love it. Yeah. We're special. <laughs> <laughs> Gentle squeeze of her hand halted her panic thoughts, and her eyes quickly flicked up to the writer gazing down at her. I don't mean to alarm you, but I feel, I feel how quickly your heart is pounding simply by holding your hand. Are you nervous? He asked curiously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying. <laughs> Every time he speaks. I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> we gotta put a British flag in the thumbnail. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. The farmer bit her lip as warmth flooded her face. Is it that obvious? Glancing over, she was able to see that the dancers were beginning to form two lines Harvey in front of Maru, Shane in front of Emily, Alex in front of Haley, Sam in front of Penny and Sebastian in front of Abigail. She and Elliot would be at the end of the line, and she could only hope that the town would be too preoccupied watching the flower queen Haley to see her fumble. I'm also going to say, I don't like when people ship Harvey and Maru. It yeah. makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, they're more of friends, so they they work together, all right? That's yeah, an they abuse are of power. co-workers. <laughs> yeah, like, she's, like, a so. secretary, and he's, like, a doctor. No. Yeah, so I really hate when people uh, ship the two of them. I'm pretty sure he's, like, in his 30s, and she's, like, yeah. at least 18. <laughs> exactly. So, so no. it's really weird. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to throw that out there, that I do not condone uh, Harvey. <laughs> we do Harvey. not consent to this ship. <laughs> yeah. Ship gross. <laughs> it really is. Okay. A bit, yeah. I just realized that I don't even know the dance routine, she admitted. A choked laugh spilling past her lips when she thought about how how ridiculous she sounded. Look, I'm sorry. If you want to dance with Leah to save yourself from looking awful, I can just- No! Ellie quickly interrupted, <laughs> tripping her hand tighter. I merely want you to enjoy yourself today. I care very little for the judgment I receive from those who live in town. I've been experiencing it for well over a year now. Besides, there's no set routine. I believe for the most part, all the pairs follow along with what the main couple perform. I cannot force you to stay and dance, though. But I can say that I, that I know it would be rather fun. There's no routine? Maria blinked. None whatsoever. We merely copy what the flower girl does. 
sorry, sorry, the flower queen. What makes <laughs> Haley the flower the flower queen? Was there a yeah. vote? <laughs> <laughs> Was she elected into power? <laughs> Elliot laughed. It did not vote for her. No, I would vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be flower queen. <laughs> Elliot laughed, nodding his head at at Haley's general direction. Oh, she mumbled. A slight, mischievous smile played on her lips. Well then, let's give him the show, shall we? With both Elliot's reassurance and confidence, she felt the anxiety that had been weighing her down ease up. Grinning cheekily, she let go of his hand and walked towards a few feet before she stood beside Maru. She waved politely at the nurse who walked back in turn, looking quite nice in a short sleeve white dress with a frilled skirt. Once all twelve dancers were in place, Mary Lewis leaned over an old stereo that had been hooked up to two other speakers. He pushed the old cassette tape into the deck and a uh, bouncy tune filled the air. Maria's eyes met Elliot's as the two swapped identical s smiles as the dance finally began. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Haley was the first to move, swaying from side to side and twirling her skirt to the rhythm of the music. In front of her, Alex began to bob his body in a way that mirrored her movements. The rest of the dancers would then follow suit, simply following their example until they moved to the next part of the dance. Maria, however, had other plans. She seemed to listen to the tempo for a few moments before deciding on a way to dance. Along to the rhythm of the music, she swayed her hips, causing the skirt of her dress to flare out and swirl around her. As her hips swayed, she stepped side to side, light on her feet as she let the music wash over her. Oh. The song shifted to the next section, and soon enough, the two were making forward movements towards each other. Elliot couldn't help but grin as he watched her dance. It was obvious for anyone to see how much fun she was having as she spun on her heels before taking another step towards him. I like this. Yeah, We're fucking see. stealing the show. Yes. Girl boss. Spotlight, baby. There was, a, there was a moment in time where everything seemed to slow for the writer. Maria's eyes met his and they were practically brimming with excitement and cheer. And a playful smile was ever present on her features. Her curly locks fl fl flowed in the air as she finished the spin. Yet the sun above cast a light on her hair and gave her a practical hollow of gold that shone above her. His, his breath caught his throat as he watched, and to him he looked downright alluring. <laughs> <laughs> Before he knew it, the song was over, and the sound of applause as cheering replicated its lovely tunes. A gentle, hand on his, a gentle touch on his hand shook him out of his thoughts, and he looked down to see Maria gazing up at him curiously. Are you okay? You were, um, staring, she said, uh, uh, whispering the- oh, shit. Are you okay? You were, um, <laughs> staring. <laughs> she whispered the last part, um, as though as if it was some secret the two had to share. <clears throat> the writer flushed. Apologies, he was simply having so much fun I couldn't help but stare. It was only a partial lie. He knew in the back of his mind that he'd been staring for more reasons than just that. The farmer giggled and brushed a few stray hairs away from her face. Whatever you say, I'm gonna grab some food and catch up with some friends, but I'll see you in a bit, yeah? Elliot nodded, saying a brief goodbye before watching her saunter away, unable to take his eyes off of her as she walked. The clearing of someone's throat managed to draw his attention away, and he turned to see Leah looking over at him, a knowing smirk on her face. You've got it bad for her, she laughed, but patting her friend on the shoulder reassuringly. Though Elliot would normally attempt to refute claims like these, he resigned himself to nodding his head in agreement. He wasn't sure what he felt for the farmer at this point, but he was beginning to feel like more than just a want for friendship. Oh, the doodle! Oh, I love oh, it! I love so the pretty. style! Yeah, their art style is really cute. Alright, I gotta... F I gotta find this bitch and have her, like, draw something. I will commission this girl. It's yes, so uh, cute. Imagine getting a commission through a Wattpad DM. <laughs> that would be <laughs> so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think we have time to do one more. Okay. 
I, I looked at the time as we were reading. I'm like, damn, 42 minutes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was a long chapter. Yeah. Well, we kept talking during most of the part. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. We're funny. Yeah. Well, at least we try to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chapter eight. We'll do this one, and then we'll spin the fantastic wheel that we have. <laughs> yes. All right. Chapter eight. What's the name? The Writer's Woes. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these leaves are starting to round out nicely. The melons should be ready to harvest in a week, I'd say. What do you think, Onion? The Mar Maria had crouched on the ground, doing her daily watering and checking up on all of her new crops. Summer was in full swing, and you can feel it. All the towns and all around town, the sounds of buzzing. Fuck, c c cicadas, cicadas, cicadas would be heard, and it seemed as everywhere the farmer went, there were butterflies and ladybugs and beetles. The trees had become more green, and she had a smart idea to tap a maple tree to her farm for fresh syrup. Despite all the beauty around the valley, the heat of the season could not be ignored. Yet the sun was shown bright in the in spring. It was sweltering now. Maria was done. Had <laughs> I, I read? I almost read that as Maria was done with Robin. <laughs> Maria had Aren't gone to Robin <laughs> for help this week before knowing that she had enough funds for a house upgrade and still desperate. For any way that she can keep her farmhouse cool. The carpenter was kind enough to loan her a old fan free of charge, and as though it seemed, didn't seem to be much better than her wonders, she'd seek the shelter from the blazing sun. The farmer had fallen into a routine of completing her chores in the early morning. Watering cop. Pooh, don't water the cops. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up there. Oh, water that's crops. <laughs> Feeding the chickens and checking restocking crab pots she'd stowed in a pond in the southern part of her farm. If she worked diligently during those few peak hours, she'd be able to escape the brunt of the heat that arrived around 11 o'clock and last well into the afternoon. During those midday hours, she found herself either taking refuge within her house, the library, or the saloon. While at home, she'd put on random television channels and would finally get around to unpacking the last of her moving boxes finding places for all of her old trinkets and items brought along from Zulu City. At the library, she found herself buried in various books, bringing her phone to play some peaceful instrumental music as she read about everything from peaceful crop to high fantasy escapades. On the days she spent in the saloon, she'd spend most of her time in the arcade, improving her skills at Journey of the Prairie King, even surpassing the previous high score, which she assumed Abigail had set before her. Damn, we're gamers. Yes. Gamer. <laughs> <clears throat> Pro gamer, it seems. <laughs> Dude, I suck at that game. No, not not that <laughs> game. It's the one where you get the Junimo in the cart, like in the minecart. Oh, you have to I don't jump. Think I've played that. Oh, that one sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> then, once the sun has begun to set and the air cooled, she returned to her farm to clean up her land, or possibly fish up the mountains of fish up in the mountains or down this. The cinder sat for us. It was a comfortable routine, routine, and she had the time she she would try to spend more of her evenings in the saloon, chatting with townsfolk and indulging herself in Gus's delicious food. She even managed to convince the chef to teach her some of, of his recipes when she had a kitchen of her own, and she intended on getting that house upgrade no later than midsummer. Today, though, she had different plans. She already fed her chickens, whom though were growing. Gorgeously. <laughs> I don't know why I struggled so much on that one. <laughs> Marty said they'd be ready to lay eggs any day now. Then watered the last of her crops, she stood up straight, dusting off her shorts before heading inside to change out of her work clothes. She quickly changed into her faded tea and washed out shorts in something far more breathable. As today, she had plans on heading south to the beach. She slipped into the simple black bikini and on the top was a flowy off-the-shoulder blouse and some denim shorts. Oh, this is nice. I wish we had a swim mod. <laughs> I want to swim in the ocean. <clears throat> she didn't quite oh know. Oh my god! I, I, I suck at swimming in real life, so mm -hmm. 
I want to be able to experience that in a game. <laughs> right. I'm like dying. I would love a swim mod. Swim mod. There's gotta be a swim mod. There has to be. She didn't quite know if she'd be swimming or not today, but there was no harm in being prepared. When she tied up her her mass of curly hair and found some comfortable sandals, she walked over to the small ice box and grabbed her whisker basket. Wicker, I'm so stupid. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, my friend. Yeah. Maybe I'm dyslexic. <laughs> uh, that would explain so much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think onion should i bring grapes or some spice berries she asked aloud turning to look at the burmese who is now stretched out comfortably on the open window pane no doubt enjoying the sun that was beginning to shine at him he, he merely mewled loudly turning over to stare at her with wide unassuming eyes she sighed and shook her head again at him i'll just bring both and i'm sure he'll appreciate the snack i'm pretty sure he's just cooped up Cooped himself up in that cabin of his again. Moments later, a few bunches of each fruit were tucked away carefully in her wicker basket, washed and wrapped in cloth. When she'd locked up her house and wished Orion goodbye, she was on her way into town, humming a cheerful tune along the way. She was stopped a handful of times while walking through the town square. Dr. Harvey, yeah, let's go! And reminded her to drink plenty of water since she'd be working in the heat. Evelyn held a polite conversation as the farmer looked at the flowers she was growing with season. Jack excitedly stopped Maria to ask about what was happening on the farm. The young girl had an increasing fondness for her ever since she was gifted a bundle of daffodils for her birthday the week prior, and she likely would have continued asking questions if it weren't for Penny walking up and reminding her it was time for class. And finally, Jody had said hello while on her way to Pierre's store. Hey. Huh? <laughs> Harvey! Harvey! <laughs> so that, that, that was so me when I was like romancing Harvey. I'd be like, Harvey, yeah. Harvey, hi, how are you? <laughs> I'd be like, hi, hello, I'm so happy to see you. Hey, Harvey, hey. Harvey? I'm like going to fucking like clinic and like looking for him. He's not there. I'm like, oh shit, yes. he could be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when? Where is the doctor? <laughs> Yeah, I would constantly like, uh, like Google his uh, like schedule on a given day, on mm -hmm. a given season. No, don't blame you. I would, I do the same thing. Yeah, so I was like, I have to give him his coffee. <laughs> I need him to like me so we can get married. <laughs> exactly. If I don't give him coffee, he'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she arrived at the beach. Her sandals digging into the warm sand, she made her way to Elliot's cabin. She paused on the wooden steps in front of the, his door, brushing off her blouse before lifting her hand to knock, but a faint sound halted her movements. She listened closely and blocked out the sound of the waves. Light piano tones were- Oh, I forgot he has a piano! Oh, yeah! Oh, you're playing the piano! That's so- Oh, oh I love a musician. <laughs> yes. You heard from his house. She stopped to listen for a few seconds. She was very curious, after all. She was aware his, her friend owed a piano, but had never heard him play. Carefully, she turned the knob of the door, slowly pushing it open to peer inside. Elliot's back was turned to her, facing the piano as he played gently. The melody wasn't one that she was familiar with, but it was beautiful nonetheless. Maria quickly cursed her luck, however. She pushed the door open by another inch, and it creaked loudly its wooden groan cutting through the sound of the piano. The writer paused and turned his head, a slight smile tugging on his lips once he saw the farmer stood there. I thought someone was there, he chuckled gently, standing up off of the piano stool to face her. That was wonderful, she murmured, stepping inside the cabin and shutting the door. A light blush dusted her cheeks now. She couldn't help but get embarrassed after being caught listening in. The writer's smile widened. Thank you, though I'm quite rusty. I took lessons as a child, but neglected practicing for many years. I picked it up again once I moved to the valley and have been honing my skills for the last year, though I don't know if I'm nearly as good as I once was, and he explains, tracing his fingers over the keys of the piano with an obvious fondness. His gaze dropped, however. A somber expression took over. What's wrong? Maria asked with a genuine concern, setting her wicker basket down at the nearby table before walking over to him. 
He sighed before lifting his head, usually a, though the usual glimmer of his green eyes were absent. I've been working day and night to finish the demo of my newest book. I, I, did success, I did successfully complete it. I sent it to a dear friend of mine online who helped me with some minor re revisions, and then I submitted it to the same publishers as before. Awaiting their responses has been driving me ap positively insane. She nodded her head as she listened along, happy to let him vent his situation to her. The occasional tune has helped, though. I can't shake this anxiety. If none of the publishers pick up this demo, I'm afraid it, I'll be out of options. I begun to run out of my bake. I begun to run my bank account dry. And there's so many favors Lewis and Gus and even Willie can offer to aid in saving any amount of gold. Sometimes. Sometimes I wish I had just thrown it all away and become a farmer like you. He laughed half-heartedly. Maria knew he was joking, but to her, it didn't sound like the worst idea. Come live on the farm with me. You know I could use the extra help, especially in summer. Watering all these crops on my own is becoming rather draining, she suggested, grinning a little. Seriously? He sputtered, obviously caught off guard. Gaining his composure, however, he shook his head. It sounds wonderful, but I can't give up on my novel. If a lot fails, though, I may have to take you up on that offer. For some reason, his denial stung somewhat, though she quickly chastised herself and regained, reined those thoughts in. Don't be stupid. Why would he ever want to live on the farm with you? He's just joking. Apologies for all my complaining. I by no means mean to be a downer. Was there any particular reason you decided to visit today? He asked, making her perk up and smile slightly. Sitting on her heels, she grabbed her wicker basket before turning back to him, lifting the cloth to show the bunches of juicy berries to the writer. You and I have been, are having a seaside picnic, and we're going to relax on the beach and forget our woes for a few hours. We'll listen to those gentle ocean sounds and tell cheerful stories and have a jolly old time. That's what friends do, right? She explained smoothly, oh, smoothly, giggling a bit at her own hypothetical question. The grin that spread on it. Elliot's face upon hearing this was infectious. Maria, that sounds absolutely wonderful. That didn't take long for the pair to get to set... Fuck. Damn it. <laughs> it didn't take <laughs> long at all for the pair to get set up. They pulled some spare blankets out of the cabin closet and laid them across the warm sand. Maria took the time to check her crab pots as Elliot dipped back into his cabin momentarily to change it to something more beach-appropriate clothing. As the farmer pulled away mussels and oysters into a bucket, the writer walked out of his house, and her breath caught her throat as she glanced at- Please tell me he's ripped. <laughs> That'd be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She stared without meaning to, taking in the sight of his bare chest now that he'd abandoned his red coat and unbuttoned his shirt. It was the first time she'd seen him show this much skin, and oh, did she drink the sight in. <laughs> I always assumed he was a bit of a string bean, she mused to herself as she shut the lid of the bucket. Skinny and tall, but he's not nearly as lanky as I thought. He's got a bit of toning on him. Oh, shit. She hadn't noticed that she'd been biting her bottom lip until it began to sting, and she cursed internally, realizing she might have inadvertently <laughs> bruised herself. Oh, shit. Let's go. <laughs> oh, my God. This is hilarious. Setting down her bucket of mollusks by the shore, she sauntered over to the blankets they set down and placed a hand on her hip. How do you manage to maintain a body like that when you're hidden inside that cabin every day? She questioned teasingly, waggling a finger at the writer. A slight blush spread on his cheeks upon hearing this. I'd like to claim it's my diet, but I eat far too many carbs to say such a thing. I'm blessed with a wonderful metabolism, I suppose, though I'll have you know I still face the consequences of my terrible hermit habits. I cannot tan. Being in the sun for more than an hour without the aid of sunscreen is a one-way road to the worst sunburn you'll ever lay your eyes on, he explained, <laughs> as he sat down upon the blankets, throwing down a leather-bound book that Maria hadn't noticed him holding, most likely because she'd been too, <laughs> too busy staring at other things. Yeah, me too. <laughs> wow. Are you perhaps inviting me to late- hold on. Are you perhaps inviting me to lay my eyes on you, Mr. Whittaker? What? White Taker? Is that what that says? Whittaker. What? I'm so stupid. <laughs> Whittaker. <laughs> I was like, there's missing an E. 
When the fucking white taker. <laughs> a white taker. <laughs> she replied smoothly. A shy grin played on her lips as she, as she twitched his words. Elliot was went wide eye at this and let out an ex- exasperated sigh. You know, I'm afraid if I, am, I attempt to respond to that question, I may say something I regret. This re- this confused Maria, and though part of her wanted the question to his statement, she could tell how he averted his gaze and how he wanted to change the topic. In a swift moment, she crossed her legs and plopped down onto the edge of the blanket. So, what are you reading? She asked curiously, gesturing to the book he brought along with him. The writer perked up at this, clearly pleasant by her interest. She gra- he grasped the n- novel and lifted it to show her the cover, embedded on the leather was shiny gold lettering reading Pride and Prejudice, and then began to ramble, providing a detailed synopsis on the book's story and how it seemed brilliantly portrayed the natural romance of its untuttered characters and how the writer, the author's writing pulls one one in and easily allows the writer to immerse himself into the early 19th ni- century time period. <laughs> <laughs> it's a literary classic, and for good reason. It was the first work which opened me up to the idea of romance. Before reading this, I had stupidly assumed that romance could not be captured in literature. That it must it must have been an emotion reserved for the silver screen. But when you, when you read this book, you can feel how the characters do. It's quite astounding, really. I envy Austen's ability to so eloquently write romance in such a way, he concluded, throwing the novel back down on the blankets gently. During his entire explanation, Maria had been staring in awe. She, he was so passionate when he spoke, she assumed that he'd easily be able to convince her of anything if he spoke with the same vigor. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to read this book in my third year of high school, but I didn't, she mumbled, wincing when she saw the way Elliot looked at her upon this admission. Don't burn me at the stake for this, but I might have cheated my way through the entire unit. Now I can see that I've done myself a disservice, as the book is fantastic as you described it. The writer sighed and let out a soft chuckle. It's become a favorite of mine as of late. I've reread it numerous times. It was actually one of the main inspirations for my newest book, the one that's just been sent off to publishers. Maria hummed, reaching into her wicker basket and plucking a few grapes from their stems. You never did tell me the theme of your novel at the flower dance, she mentioned before popping the berries into her mouth. It's like Pride and Prejudice is centered around the romance that is a bit of drama added in the spice to the story. The setting is modern and it takes place on a train. The idea is such a scenario has stuck into my mind ever since I moved into the valley. When I learned the old railroads up at the north, the idea of writing one one of my tales and having it set in the train fascinated me. It just happened to have the location work perfectly for my novel, he explained. That sounds interesting. It'd be sure to be first in line to buy a copy once it's published, she said with a grin. Emily quickly shook his head. No, I would not not be able to have you purchase a copy. I'll gladly let you read it for free. She rolled her eyes. Fine, but just to let you know, I'll be buying five copies. And if you try to argue with me, I'll make that ten, mister. <laughs> Despite his <laughs> slight frustration, the two shared a laugh over this. Aw, cute. <laughs> That's cute. You know, it's kind of funny, Maria murmured once their laughter settled down. Romance is actually one of my favorite genres when it comes to writing film and the theater. But I don't like cheesy romance, though I can indulge in it. I'm a sucker for real romance. You get to watch it build, and you see how characters can go from simply being enamored with one another to being fully invested, helping each other grow and become better people. The two will look at one another, and you can just see it in their eyes. It's a feeling that I... She'd been rambling, quickly catching herself before she would have ended up admitting something far too personal. Quickly, she cleared her throat and blushed, brushing some stray hairs away from her face. Sorry, I let myself get caught up. No need to apologize, Elliot reassured her, offering a gentle smile. And I actually remembered that romance was a favorite of yours. You mentioned it many weeks ago. I've gotten curious and asked while we were both shopping at Pierre's. Oh, he remembered! (laughs) I think that is one of his heart events where he asks you your favorite novel thing, and romance is one of them. That's really cute. I love this book. 
Yeah, it's that's good. This jogged Maria's memory. She thought back to that day. It was early spring, and she had been sitting in between some of the shelves in Pierre's store, attempting to do some mental math and budget out how much she can afford to pay for seeds and how much she can save for actual food. Alia had entered the store, and while she was lost in her thoughts, the two had a brief, pleasant conversation. They discussed the weather, the crops Maria had planned on growing, and finally he asked her her favorite type of novel. Slyly, she answered romance, assuming he would just take her for some hopeless romantic to watch cheesy rom-coms, but he surprised her by being genuinely invested in her answer. The rest of the afternoon had gone fairly smoothly. They chatted and ate berries and told childhood stories, which brought back pl- plenty of laughs. At that point, Sam showed up with both Vincent and Jazz in tow, no doubtably babysitting on his mother's behalf. And Maria, after a lot of begging with the two ch- uh, ex- excitable children, excused herself to build sand castles with them close to the shore. Aw, that's, that's nice. That's sweet. I enjoy that. When she looked back, she'd been able to she'd be able to catch Elliot stealing glances at her over the top of his book before quickly burying his face in the pages to pretend like nothing had happened. She made a mental note to tease him about this later. One spectacular sandcastle later, the two children waved disappointed goodbyes as Sam called out to them, and she watched the two kids dash away, smiling as their giggles filled the air. Once they had left the beach, she slipped her phone out of her back pocket, eyes skimming over the digital five forty five that momentarily flashed. Well, she announced, loud enough for the writer to hear as he slowly closed his novel. This has been quite the lovely summer afternoon, though I do have to get back to the farm at some point. I've got evening chores and budgeting to do. Adult stuff, she sighed, muttering the last two words as to say. <laughs> Elliot chuckled. I'm sad to hear it, though I could never keep you away from your work. It is your livelihood, after all. However, I do insist that you take this with you. As he spoke, he lifted his copy of Pride and Prejudice and held it out to her. Am I saying this right? <laughs> Pride and Prejudice, yeah. Okay, just making sure. I didn't want <laughs> Yeah, you got it. It seemed wrong to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Rhea quickly shook her head. Oh, I couldn't. I, I know... I know... I don't know when I'd even find time to read it. I'm letting you borrow it. And I've read it so many times I can quote the majority of it purely from memory. Take it as long as you need to read it. I wouldn't mind it if it took you years, he argued. She huffed before struggling, shrugging her shoulders. All right, fine, she muttered, giving in as she gently grasped the book and took it from into her arms. But just to spite you, I'm going to take as long as possible to read this now. <laughs> oh, you laughed. Oh, already ac- accumulated to the bratty sense of humor she has at times. The two share goodbyes, and minutes later, Maria was slot- s- soldered away towards the bridge, wicker basket in one, and the leather book held tightly on her chest in the other. Oddly, she felt quite nice having something of Elliot's, and the feeling even more nice knowing that she could trust, be trusted with an object he was so fond of. Aww. She's so cute. It is cute. Okay. Days later, Maria found herself checking on her crops again. The sun was nearly done setting, and the sky was a gradient of peachy pink and deep violet. Her chickens had already gone to rest inside their coop for the day, and Onion was likely inside and asleep on her pillow like he usually was this time of day. I've really got to talk to Robin about contacting someone to install a sprinkler system. This is getting ridiculous, she muttered, seeing how dry the soil around her melons had already become due to the sweltering heat of the day. She started having to water some crops twice a day to keep up with how hot it could get. Just as soon as she lifted her watering can, however, the sound of a voice calling out quickly stopped her. Maria! Maria, I've got wonderful news! Elliot? She wondered internally. Oh, sorry. Maria! Maria, I've got wonderful news! (laughs) She wondered internally. He lost his British accent. I had to go back and put the accent on. Um, and when she turned to look towards the east entrance of her farmland, sure enough, the all too familiar rider was standing there, dressed in his regular red coat with a beaming grin on his face. Confused, she set down her can and dashed over, slipping off her work gloves as she approached. What's up with you? You look like you won the Zuzu City Lottery. 
she giggled, wiping her forehead with the back of her palm. The publisher was interested in my novel, she pra he practically splattered out without being able to contain the excitement in his voice. What? She screamed, <laughs> dropping her glove and staring at him wide. Elliot, that's amazing. She couldn't stop herself from pulling him into a celebratory hug, only to squee in surprise when she lifted, when she was lifted off the ground and swung around. Which, aw, this is cute. <laughs> she was actually really quite shocked cute. that he'd been able to pick her up. Not that she was complaining. The pair laughed as he spun in a circle. Though Elliot was very careful as he gently set her down, and yet Maria found herself missing his touch as he pulled his hands off of her waist. They want to see me in Zuzu City next week for a meeting. I've made preparations to leave Friday, and I'll visit their publisher uh, headquarters Saturday morning. I'd likely be back in the evening that same day, unless something keeps me occupied. He quickly explained his happy smile never once leaving his face as he spoke. Maria's own smile fluttered a bit upon hearing this, and the writer noticed. What's wrong? he asked with a proud brow. Nothing, she quickly answered. Nothing. It's just, well, my birthday is on Saturday. But don't feel bad. This is an opportunity you can't pass up, and I'll have plenty more birthdays after this one. I'll try and return as soon as possible, then. I'd hate to not be here and help you celebrate your first birthday living in the valley, he affirmed, smiling down at her before turning his gaze towards the farmland. It looks so lovely here, especially in the evening. You've done a wonderful job cleaning the land, I must say, he complimented her, leaving a blush dusting her cheek. Aw, oh, thanks. It's a lot of hard work. Very rewarding, though. I get lots of forage goods when clearing up the land. In fact, I made smoothies and juice earlier today with some of my berries. Want to come inside and taste them? She offered, nodding her head in the direction of the farmhouse. Oh, I can never turn, on, turn down an offer like that. God, they are it. so in love. <laughs> it's really cute. This she is... grinned and offered her hand to him, and he reciprocated by lacing his fingers with her own. Soon after, the two were walking hand in hand towards their home, the exciting prospects of the future buzzing in both their minds. I love this fucking book. <laughs> yeah, this one's really cute. Oh my god. Alright, <laughs> what do you think? It's it gets it keeps getting better. <laughs> this is the slow burner that I've been wanting for my entire life. Yes, I love slow burn. Dude, this kind of does play like Sardew Valley. I was just like Honestly, building up the yeah, hearts like... and everything. Okay, I have to Google Elliot's heart events because I've never done them. I remember a few off mm -hmm. the top of my head. Uh, to look at it. Uh, schedule, really nice. skip, like, what, skip, okay. Uh, enter a cabin, start a balloon, uh, Elliot's home. I do hope that, um, mm -hmm. the, the wheel will give us this option again. Not like, we won't do the same options in a row, just, just mm -hmm. for a bit diversity, but I hope we do land on this again someday, because this book is so fucking good. It's really nice. Absolutely. If you guys would like to read this book, I will have it linked down below if you just want to read it without us. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's time for our segment that I like to call the Fan Fiction Roulette, where I regret yes. making this book. <laughs> like, wheel, sorry. <laughs> we got a lot of options. Ooh. I think I added some from, from last time. I did. There's like a shuffle option, so I shuffled through. So... The two main ones that I added was Coda's Choice and Phoenix's Choice. That way we get to pick if, if it does land on us. And let me share screen. That way you can see what the hell is happening. I would love that. You can see the little yippee. <laughs> All right. Spin the wheel. Oh, oh shit. Ishimondo. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yippee! 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 <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so I the next one, next one that we read, it will be Ishimondo. I cannot wait. Yes. But thank you guys for joining us on this read. Um, sorry we didn't do another chapter. We we got a little distracted in the first chapter, the seventh yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> 
Elliot's British. Maria is falling for Elliot mad hard, and so is Elliot back. And now his book's published. What will happen now? I sure do wonder. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye.